What's up, guys? My name's Mikey, and you're watching To All The Crowd Rooms. Our channel has lots of various content from interviews, live sets, to drinking games, to a little trivia game called Who Wants To Be A Scene Kid, which is basically just a ripoff of Who Wants To Be A Millionaire, but with like warp tour scene questions. So if you're into that, hit subscribe and go check those videos out. Today, we have a special one because we have the dudes that are bringing back Crab Core in 2021 with their hit new single and music video video stick up we got hall of the elders what's going on fellas what's up man yo guys so let's go around introduce everyone in the band say your name what you play and if you were a pokemon who who you would be oh, oh shit <laughs> if, if you go first all right what's up my name is goose and i play bass and if i had to be a pokemon I'd want to be Hitmonchan. Oh, okay. yeah. Some Gen 1 fighter types. Wait, so why do they call you Goose? Uh, my real name is Christian Saragusa. Oh. And Goose just fits into that. <laughs> I like that. And why Hitmon, uh, Hitmonchan? Uh, whenever I play Pokemon, I always normally choose, like, I normally have two or three, like, fighting types in my team, which is really unbalanced and bad. But <laughs> I, I really like fighting Pokemon. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. Uh, I'm Nate, and I play drums. I I do a little do 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 with the drums, and I think I would be an Abra because he's <laughs> cute and he's little, and you I run like... away from all your problems. <laughs> he just and, disappeared. <laughs> and I disappear when you least expect it. Peace, bitches. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm Mark. I play guitar, and I sing, and... When it comes to Pokemon, shit, man. Like, I love Pokemon, but I don't know who I would be. But I like water types. So I guess, like, Blastoise. Hell yeah, he's yeah. pretty dope, bro. I don't know if, like, that's who I would be, but that's who I would choose if I was a Pokemon sellout. trainer. Sellout. I'm with that. Yeah, I'm kind of a sellout. Everyone likes the originals. Well, if I, if I didn't pick Blastoise and I had to pick someone else, maybe, like, Melodic. Cause that Pokemon is so hard to get in Gen Three. If you know the struggle to get it, you gotta like catch a Feebas and then do all this shit to make it evolve. It's a pain in the ass, just like my life. But anyways, <laughs> that's there you sick. have it. And we got two other members that aren't here. Uh, Bailey does the screams, and Will plays lead guitar. Dope. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I had to ask you the Pokemon question because I've seen your guys' tour bus. Oh, fuck yeah. And you guys, who did the painting all over it? Because for the viewers listening, you guys have a, a tour bus and it looks like you guys spray painted uh, Pikachu all on the side of it. Yeah, so we bought a school bus in 2016, two months before we went on Warp Tour. And in the middle of Warp Tour... Um, one of the other like staff members on the tour just like knocked on the door in the parking lot and was like, bro, can I paint your bus? And I was just like, <laughs> fuck yeah, you can paint our bus. What? It's ugly as shit. It's just yellow. And they're like, what do you want? What do you want to paint on it? And they, they were like a group of graffiti artists. Um, and we had like a giant plushie of Pikachu sitting on our dashboard. And I was just like, I don't know, man, just paint Pikachu all over it. I don't, I don't care. And so, uh they did over the, like the next two days so in new york and connecticut and the main artist's name was saba and he's from new mexico um and like that's their thing him and his like group of guys from transform like the transform stage they were like the graffiti artists they were with the tour oh sick that's, that's so what they what, do so they were painting to music or some shit they yeah so like artists on the transform stage would be like performing and they would be doing graffiti art on like canvases and selling it during the day of warp tour and then like uh tagging anything else along the tour that may or may not have been legal i don't know yeah. but they they offered to paint our bus because it obviously needed a paint job and i was like yeah man i'll you know throw you money for paint and you just do your thing and like we'd go out and do our thing during the day and we'd get back at night and there'd be like outlines done one day 
and then coloring done the next day and then all the shading done the next day and then it was done holy shit after so, a few days so you got your ride pimped for free basically well like I mean, I, for the paint. I paid them like because we were selling CDs every day. So I'd be like, uh, I'll put you on a payment plan because uh, every time we got a little extra profit, I'll, I'll throw that to you as a tip or for the paint or whatever. So like we like, I don't know, when you're on Warped Tour, you like take care of each other. And it's all about like cash flow out there because everyone needs it for food and gas and just like it's like a big family. Yeah. And also watching out for each other. That's sick. And that's like a thing that all bands want to do at some point in their careers, play Warp Tour. So like RIP Warp Tour, but like you guys got to do it. How many years and did you guys get to do the whole run? Uh, we did the whole run for three years, but we performed two years. But I had been hitchhiking by myself since 2015, just trying to like get the name out there. And then eventually like I met some people and they're like, oh, yeah, you should hook up with us next year. And I was like, all right, maybe I should get a vehicle. So then I just like went on Craigslist and bought a bus. And we were like, all right, let's take the seats out and throw some furniture in it and hit the road. Yo, that's fucking sick. So, yeah, that I think that's a really cool way, like <laughs> how you got your way on to Warp Tour. You paid your dues the first year, hitchhiked to each location. I'm guessing you made some friends and those connects got you on the next year. Yeah, but every connect was like by chance and by luck. And I don't know, it just felt like a dream the way everything happened. It was so by chance. Like I would be in a bad situation and then someone, I would run into someone that would like help me get out of that bad situation. But it was like the odds of that happening were so like small. And I was just like, I don't know how the hell this happened, but I'm thankful that I found a ride to the next location or I found this person that knows someone that is on the tour etc damn so was there any like nightmare stories of like hitchhiking like from destination to destination on warp tour uh yeah there's plenty but they all have happy endings so um i don't know it's like it's like every time something bad would happen i've learned from it and there'd always be something good that came out of it but at the time it would feel like the worst thing ever so mm. let me think uh well the worst thing was the first time i was planning on doing like a long run 2015 i was gonna go in my car with some cds and like sell to the whole southeast section of warp tour that was when i was first getting into it but then i got in a car wreck right before warp tour started oh shit i was like oh man what am i gonna do i don't have a car anymore and i just bought like a thousand cds on a credit card and I need to sell these. And the only way I'm going to sell them is if I get to work tour. So then like I hitched a ride with some friends to like Tennessee. And well, so that was the first like tragedy, my car getting in a wreck, but I got a ride to Tennessee and back to Atlanta. Cause I live in Atlanta. Then Atlanta was the next day. And like while I was selling CDs at Atlanta all day, I would be asking anybody that had like a warp tour pass, like for a ride. And it wasn't until like the end of the day that someone was like, yeah, we just fired someone. So we have an extra seat. But that was after another band offered me a ride and they gave me their number. And then they stopped replying to me at the end of the day. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. But luckily I found a ride at the end of the day. Then I got to Florida the next day, ran into the same guy that bailed on me. I was like, yo dude, what the hell happened? <laughs> was like, Oh, sorry, bro. Like, uh, my phone died. And then we left early. Uh, and that's why we weren't there to pick you up. It's like, bro, but, you could have stranded me there. What the fuck? Yeah. Well, that's what happened until I got lucky, but yeah that's one of the horror stories and then like 2018 you guys know what happened day day one or day zero. Oh yeah with the with the trans transmission yeah you tell that story yeah man uh we had someone coming in to to help us with our promotions and we were picking her up from like san diego not whatever the airport at san diego and like as soon as we pull in me and mark are looking at each other because we can tell something's like wrong with the bus this is 2018 the day before the day tour before, started the day before it started bro and like we could tell something was wrong and we kept looking at each other like i don't we don't know what it is and like before that person got out of the terminal 
we had lost like all movement in the in the bus so we knew something was like wrong with the transmission and uh like he works on the bus mainly i i, I kind of help him hold his tools and his flashlight you know whatever who sleeps the whole time and uh and so we had to get this fixed and like we had to get like towed to this like random like sketchy transmission <laughs> shop like a quarter mile away from like the mexico no like, we went to uh, to the like big professional oh yeah shoppers. yeah yeah we went to a big place first and it was like super expensive way too expensive the quote yeah it was it was way out of our league so we got towed to this like other place yeah we got towed a second time this is all the day before warp tour in right. california and like we're freaking out like we, we, when was going to happen and then like we had to end up leave the bus there and i came up with the idea we can rent a van from home depot and then we could take that like a mattress i don't know put it in the back of the home depot van and then like I don't think we were supposed to leave the area, but we went all up and down California in a Home Depot van. <laughs> yeah, the lucky thing was they were like, yeah, it'll be five days before we put your new transmission in. But the first five days of the tour were all in California and it routed back through San Diego. Yeah, so, so we were lucky for that. Yeah, yeah, we took this van we rented from Home Depot that was supposed to stay in the city and we went all over California all the way up to Mountain View five dudes (laughs) and a merch girl crammed into a work van yeah Yeah. and and we did the first five days of Warp Tour and then there was a day off where we get two vans no well we got well yeah yeah yeah. we we, oh yeah yeah we got to take it back because i rented a second one yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we we had to take the other one back so we had to rent another van because home depot was calling us like hey we need (laughs) our van van. back (laughs) so we we brought it back and then we rented out a second van so we just (laughs) moved all the gear from one van from like the san diego home Home depot to like the los angeles home depot van yeah. And then we returned the van and then got in the second van for the next three days, right. did the rest of California, and then we returned the van yeah. and picked up our bus from the transmission shop because it was repaired by then. But we were basically starting the tour off like it, four grand in the hole. Yeah, we were already red. Day not day zero. <laughs> like we were like, this is not how we expected this to start, right? Um, we got through it, yeah. man. We pushed through it, and and we made it to every single day after that. <laughs> made it every day after that, so Dude, glad it happened sick. at the beginning and not in the middle. I'm guessing yeah. you had to cut costs the rest of the tour, right? Yeah, but yeah. that's how Warped Tour is. If you're a small band, you're just trying to make it make it work, you know. Because in the long run, it's worth it for the exposure and the experience. Sick. Yep. I'm sorry. Every time I look into our our camera, I can see Goose. And I don't know if you ever seen that Rock meme where he has like the black turtleneck and like the gold the gold chain. But you look like <laughs> no, I think he looks like a hamster. You look like you're trying to be the Rock in that meme. We gotta find that meme. We gotta find that meme. <laughs> Man, Goose is looking like uh like Goku going Super Saiyan. I thought Cloud. <laughs> Oh, Final Fantasy, bro? Yeah, Final Fantasy Seven, like Cloud. A Super Cloud Saiyan hamster. Yeah, yeah, with a big old buster sword. All right, boys, let's take this back a bit from the, the early stages of the band. Oh, you guys are from Atlanta, correct? Yeah, man. So what was it like coming up in your guys' metalcore, metalcore scene? Um, Let's see. That was like we really started playing out in Atlanta a lot in 2015 and that's before these two guys joined the band but will the other guitarist was in the band and i was doing all the vocals at that time so you're doing screams too yeah nice Um, yeah i actually saw a picture of you guys and like you had dreads and shit like that yeah i I used to have dreads which it actually honestly helped for like promoting because i would go to shows that i wasn't playing just to like hand out flyers to our upcoming shows and people would be like i remember you you're the guy with dreads and i was like oh good <laughs> <laughs> gotta be memorable uh i mean so like 2015 and 16 it was actually like pretty good we were playing a lot of local shows we we weren't playing any out of town shows then because we were still pretty fresh but it was pretty good because the metalcore scene was good back then yeah who's and, uh, like, the big dogs in your area uh it was like coming off of like woe is me and attila's fame and then like after woe is me people were all about issues and shit but then with like local bands uh i don't even know 
animals yeah animals, animals eat, as animals eat my insides they were like the go-to local metalcore band yeah. at the time and then we like hooked up with them and planned a big festival called dad fest and that was one of the largest atlanta shows we've ever played and it was just like all the most active atlanta based bands playing together at the masquerade which is the hometown atlanta venue cool um and then it kind of just like declined after that because i think i don't say metalcore got less popular but definitely like the 2008 to 2012 like scene scene started to lose momentum sure but like we didn't stop making that type of music that's the only type of music we like to make hell yeah the guys are but, bringing it into 2021 I mean, I think, with some crab core i think that happened a lot though like the metalcore scene like dropped off because you like death core. whatever whatever the core, core. The yeah, core, the core kill, yeah. scene yeah because like i was living in a different area at the time and like that whole scene dropped off too i just think i don't know what happened but like something happened with the scene altogether because i was a different location and like yeah i guess deathcore came around i really I feel know. like deathcore came up and then everybody just wanted slower breakdowns and just beefy deep vocals the entire time yeah between like <laughs> 2016 and 17 things were pretty slow for us um locally and then we started to beef up our lineup 2017 that's when goose and nate joined yeah. and will was already on board and then we were becoming active with warp tour and uh locally Honestly, like locally, things were really slow during those years. But when we started to finally play out of town, we were like, oh, wow, the scene is really different depending on what towns you're in. California was great. Yeah. Yeah. By the time we ever played California, it was like complete 180 degrees different. Like they love music out there of any shape or form, whether it's metalcore, yeah. deathcore, they jazz, Mexico. hip hop. We play in New New Mexico was it New Mexico? Yeah, New Mexico was really good. They love it was crazy core they, music. They didn't care what you play. They were watching you. You could play bongos, and they would just sit there <laughs> like in a and and just like root you on. Yeah, but at Atlanta, Utah, I think like Utah, I think like metal became a little less popular, and rap really took over. Atlanta is like amazing for rap and hip hop right now, and it just keeps skyrocketing and growing. But. Definitely. I mean, we're still here. <laughs> Sick. So, so you, when the band started to to come together as the lineup that we have now, what what bands was everyone in before Hall of the Elders? Where you go? Yeah, you're you're uh, in another band. Uh, I was in another band, but I was also I'm uh I was playing in Virginia with a band called Kill the Mime. It was just a party metal band. All we did was drink and play metal. Hell yeah. Um, uh, I I moved down here actually i moved down here christmas of 2017 and literally i started talking to mark i think like three days later you know what i mean it was crazy like i i moved here and then uh and that's what i was playing in uh hey were you in another another band uh i was in a alt rock band called the valvedeers for a while and we were going to and i was in i was in the group for like i think six or seven months and we were literally just practicing and jamming like like at least like two three times a week and and then the week before our first show um our vocalist was like uh i decided that um if uh, we were ever to go on tour i wouldn't quit my job for that so i'm just gonna Mm. stop this before it starts and i call that blue ball syndrome (laughs) you quit before you even have a chance Mark's to do well. Post. Mark was in a band <laughs> called the Animal Crackers. We should um, about that. Maybe. <laughs> well, well, I'm like the founding member, so I wasn't in a band before I joined the band. I just started the band after my previous band broke up, but it was nothing like this. It was like a college rock and roll cover band, and we would just play at a bunch of bars because okay. I was in college, and that was like our weekend uh, side hustle but it was a lot of fun and we would play original cool. stuff and then a bunch of covers and we would do like system of a down covers and uh rage against the machine covers because i like the metal side of bar friendly material so that's what we would do sick but, and 
uh, talking about college, I read somewhere that that's actually where the name Hall of the Elders came from. Um, well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so, like, the first two years that I was in college in Valdosta, which is, like, south, south, south Georgia, um, I was in this bar band called Animal Crackers. And then after that ended, because, like, our bass player – slash vocalist he graduated and went on to new things and like our drummer went to jail and i was like all right i'm gonna start a metalcore crabcore band um that was like 2013 and i got my own house and the bottom floor was just one giant room because it used to be a garage but they converted it into like a living room so i was like all right i'm gonna make this a band room and then i had like the demos for what we started with and i started like getting musicians together and we were playing live or not live but we were playing songs and i was like all right we need to play live and there's not very many venues around this town so let's just host house shows and since it was a giant room i was like we can play fucking house shows right here and that was like half the reason why i rented the house in the first place because i was like look big ass room band practice but then there was a, a bunch of other local metal bands in valdosta and they're like yeah we need a place to play too so we just started having like three house shows every week Sick. in uh, my house. And then people were calling it the Elder Hall. But the name Hall of the Elders came first. And then we named the house the Elder Hall after that. And then like for the next two years, we just had a bunch of crazy house shows and touring bands would come there and local bands would play there. And like I lost a few windows from mosh pits, but then we would just board them up. <laughs> keep things going but yeah that's kind of how we got our start hosting house shows in valdosta like a small little i mean it's not that small of a town but compared to atlanta it's small but it's bigger than like a country town because it has a college in it so yeah so you throw these crazy rager like college house party shows and i'd say half of them were crazy ragers and then half of them would be like absolutely nobody would show up because mm. it would be like a Tuesday and a touring band that no one had ever heard of. And, but other than that, yeah, when they got crazy, they were like out of control and I would just be there like, yeah, well, I'm not going to stop it. This is crazy. I like this. What's the craziest thing that's happened at one of your shows? Um, let me think. There was a touring band called, uh, black something. It was like, black fuck why can't i think of it i'd have to look it up okay. they were a touring band and everyone was like oh my gosh black uh it's not like black magic it's black something people are probably gonna roast me for not remembering <laughs> it black murder? no not black was was i was about to say what <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> i was about to say what <laughs> What were they called? Black. I'll think of it in like five minutes and just craziest, randomly interrupt you. The craziest thing I ever saw was someone like chugging a beer from a shoe. No, 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 no. That's not crazy. That's crazy to me. So this <laughs> this this band showed up to my house and each guitarist had a full stack and the bassist had two eight by tens. So my one entire wall of my living room was just speakers. And then there was like 40 or 50 people in my living room like if you wanted to walk to the other side of the living room it would take you you know a good amount of effort and i filmed the whole thing um just because i was like holy shit i can't believe this is happening in my living room and uh and there was just like people pushing and moshing the entire time and then i had like a glass front door attached to the living room and like the mosh pit kept swaying side to side of the whole living room. And eventually they just pushed into that door and the entire door just shattered and a, a bunch of people went through it. And then they came back and like the show kept going. Damn. Uh, yeah. And then the uh, like promoter guy the next day like showed up and was like, oh, sorry about that, bro. But we've got like some plywood here and we're going to board up your front door for you. <laughs> <laughs> The carpet was like all ripped up and like i was like all right i don't care whatever Your landlord probably hated you guys 
Dude, all right. So here's the crazy thing. So I graduated and my lease was about to end. So when I moved out, I was like, damn, there's no way I'm getting my deposit back. And I got like 90% of my deposit back. And I was like, what? That doesn't seem right because the carpet is totally fucked. The front door is boarded up. One of the windows is boarded up. Like this place has been destroyed from all these house shows, but they gave me 90% back. It's like, and then, I'm not like, asking any questions. Yeah, I didn't ask any questions. But every few years, like, I'll swing by there and just, like, look at the house because it has so many memories. Mm-hmm. And it's just been sitting there since I left, and they haven't rented it out to anybody. And I'm like, damn, they probably just gave up after that. Oh, like, no. Yeah. You fucked it up for them, and they gave you your security deposit back. I guess. But I, I, like you said, I'm not going to ask any questions. Yeah, that's that's their own business. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, when all right. So I know you guys had an early record uh, called Bioacoustic, um, but I couldn't find it anywhere. But this is your Good. <laughs> this is your guys' early stuff, which I happen to notice a bunch of songs off it. You, I'm guessing you guys re-recorded for uh, your other EPs. Can we talk Balls a little deep. bit about? Okay. Can we talk a little bit about uh, the bioacoustic era? So that was like a demo EP from 2014. So all the songs we were playing at those house shows we just talked about, Mm -hmm. we took spring break, the band at the time, to record all the songs we were playing because like all the students were out of town. There was no shows booked for that week. And I was like, me and my drummer and other guitarists at the time i was like all right we're gonna take this whole week no one go to the beach let's just record all our songs and we don't have much money so let's just like mix it ourselves and this will be our demo slash first ep ever and that's what bioacoustic was so So, you're, you're not a fan of it uh compared to like i mean i mixed it myself and i had no idea what i was doing at the time it was like the best thing we had ever done but it was also the worst thing we had ever done and then i was like all right some of these songs are decent and they deserve quality recording so then like later when we had our shit together we re-recorded them and released them officially on like distributors like with well we use cd baby so that way it could be on spotify and like itunes and all that jazz so a lot of the songs that were on bioacoustic got remastered and re-recorded and re-released on our EP called Balls Deep with like two other new songs. And then there's some songs on bioacoustic that we were just like, yeah, these suck. So let's just never re-record them again. Oh, also that band was called Black Mask. Okay. Um, yeah, I just looked it up. Nailed it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the EP. So uh, is there a deeper meaning behind the album titles, Just the Tip and Balls Deep? Uh, Or are we just having uh, Silly Goose time? uh, uh, Silly Goose. Silly Me time? Yeah, Silly Me time. Silly Me. (laughs) Let me think. I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure there was a reason we did it. Uh, Yeah, so Just the Tip came first. (laughs) and like uh will our other guitarist was in the band and i was in the band and we had been working on some demos this is since the valdosta house show era and we were trying to think of a name for our ep and i was like bro we have like so many demos now bro like everything we're showing to people is like just the tip of the iceberg Mm. and then on top of that we were watching archer if you ever seen that show yeah and like they had a joke in there and like he just kept saying just the tip i forget what the context was but i was just like bro this is like just the tip of everything we're about to release so we got a double entendre yeah you could say that (laughs) (laughs) But, like, we weren't trying to be sexual or anything. I was just like, bro, it's, like, just the tip, bro. And he was like, bro. And I was like, bro. 
bro. <laughs> Are you guys like low key kind of the characters you play uh, on your YouTube channel? I saw you guys just released the video of you guys in the studio. It's like these guys are fucking. They, they're just, Bro, that's that's the, us. That's our reality show. Like we had a whole <laughs> camera crew just like film us in the moment. I completely forgot they were there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for the viewers that don't know, you have a, a YouTube channel and that's where a bunch of your music videos are and stuff. Uh, but one of the main segments on your YouTube channel is uh, a segment called Bio News. Can oh, we talk? Yeah. A Hell yeah. Let's Hell talk yeah. a little bit about Bio you News. You guys talk about Bio News. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do about Bio News? What is it? Where do we get the name Bio News from? Oh, you know what? Because we got bioacoustic, we got bio news. Yeah. So, all right, bio, bioacoustic kind of like inspired bio news, but B I O bio stands for before it's old. Yes. And and we say that in our actual. Yeah, you want your news before it's old because it's new. Oh. So it's like news before it's old. Well, my favorite thing about the bio news is uh, the bar at the bottom where you just write a bunch of bullshit. In oh, there. shit. Did you I've read, read it? I've read every single one I watch. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I've even read the one where you're like, you're busted, I bet bro. you're not even reading this shit anyway, but fuck it. Like, kind of. Oh, he read it. <laughs> The yeah, the ticker's the best part. It's just supposed the to be aesthetic, and if you read it, then you're looking too far into it. Oh man, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. That you actually watched every one of them. I'm, I'm, I watched I'm a bunch impressed. of them. I didn't see every single one, but I'm I, impressed. <laughs> I even forget to look at it. <laughs> yeah, that shit's funny. But uh, yeah. for the for the people that haven't seen it, why should they go watch Bio News? What do you guys got for them? What kind of content were you giving the people? Uh, we're giving them, I think, uh, a lot of uh, local scene content for our area. But all, on top of that, we always try to incorporate something that's like just oh. blow your mind. You're like, what? 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 What, what did I just watch? You know, <laughs> like there, there, there's some episodes that are just bounced from idea to idea, and you're like, okay, at the end, I don't know what I should take with all that information. Some are a little bit more serious, but like there's also segments that we take and we put we almost put into every bio news like we'll do like i i'll do a h games or they'll be the anchor or like tell them what h games is h games is just a show just a bunch of mayhem it's like my sports segment uh we just make a bunch of stuff up i mean if you've watched them yeah it's yeah it's kind of like we got bull riding we got fucking shopping carts colliding at each other yeah, it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of like an homage to like jackass uh and uh I mean, shit, one of my favorite ones was drywall punching. I mean, we were measuring the hole of a drywall to see who wins. I'm not going to let you spoilers to see who won that one, but like, this is stuff like that. It's just, this is off the wall. Yeah. Let me, let me say something. So, uh, bio news started because like bands always do like, oh, here's an update video with some news about our band. Like, oh, we got a new single coming out and some new merch. And like, I was like, that's cool. But like, that's super boring. Like no one wants to just see you hold a camera up with your band and talk about what your band's about to do. We need to have a you go all way out. to, yeah. Tell people the news of our band without being boring as fuck. And I was like, well, I went to school for mass media, which is basically going to school for being a news anchor, but I didn't go into the field, but I have the training. So let's fucking make <laughs> let's let's make it let's make a news show. But that'll be how we give everyone our band updates, and that's how it started. But it's turned into um, more focused on the Atlanta scene because I was like, we need to start bringing on other bands because there's more happening than just what we're doing. So starting with like season two we just have a new season every year so 2019 was our first season then our second season we started getting our friends bands and other local bands that were making moves on the show and trying to announce when other bands were releasing albums or playing shows or if we were going on tour with our friends we'd be like hey going on tour with this band and also you can watch us duke it out in the next h games episode so like yeah yo i think I that's know. such a good way to like kind of support your scene but also just like have fun with it also, at the same time we kind of also put a little twist on it too though like when we're, we're interviewing people you know like yeah well this this season we're trying to interview other local atlanta bands and just yeah. 
I don't know, expand a little bit instead we'll of just like beating them in sports competitions, maybe interview them too. <laughs> we're undefeated. Well, let's turn this interview around. Why don't you guys interview me for a second? Oh, okay. okay. All right, man. When did you start doing interviews? Started interviews August 2019. Uh, my That's band. Started Burns. Yeah, my band started coming to uh, a slow end, uh, and I still wanted to make content, so I started up the YouTube channel. So your band died out, and you wanted to keep making content, or yep. your band's still around? My band's not around anymore. What was your band called? Heaven's Sake. We're like emo revival, kind of like uh, Hawthorne yeah. Heights, Armor for yeah. Sleep kind of vibe. About it. About it. Hell yeah. All right. Like my it. next question for you is where the fuck are you? It looks like a prison cell with two plants. So uh, I am at the moon base. Uh, this is typically, base. yeah, you know, like... Uh, so basically me and my roommate we you could buy for $30 uh 200 uh acres of the moon and we did that and we got this moon base. Oh fuck, fuck yeah, yeah dude. dude. We got the certificate and everything. So you so you know Elon Musk like personally. Oh yeah, we go way back. Oh, dude. Damn, dude. Did, did did he tell you to buy Bitcoin the uh, last no, night? No, 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 no. I, I actually no have Bitcoin. a Shiba Inu and I pet her every night and it helps the stocks go up every time. You pet who? My Shiba Inu. It's, you, it's you, a doggy. It's, oh. it's like a, it's, it's, it's it's Japanese dog. So it's like a fox. I thought you said emu. No, oh, no, 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 Shiba Inu. It's it's uh it's the Doge, and uh, me and Elon, we have the Doge coin, and Damn. we uh we pet the dog for good luck, and the stocks just go to the moon, and then I'm chilling at the moon base the and moon. fucking Hashtag making that day. screw. You know the fucking vibes. So that's how you got to the moon. It all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. Damn. All right. So I used to have a I used to have an emu, but every time I'd pet it, I would get bad luck. You you so. had an emu? Emu, yeah. For real? Like, yeah, like the relative of an ostrich. Yeah, would they have those in Atlanta? Mark has everything. No, not in Atlanta, <laughs> but like you can find them in the countryside or on Craigslist or some shit. It's not it's not related to the band, but like before I started <laughs> this fun fact. This was like back when I was 16, I like bought yeah. an emu and didn't tell my parents or anybody and I was just like <laughs> it, it's a long story that's not worth diving into. How much are they going for? Uh, I would say between two hundred and four hundred dollars. Okay. And I like had a fundraiser with a bunch of friends and coworkers. It was mostly people that didn't believe I would get an emu, and I was like, I had like this big list, and I was like, if you sign this, then you have to write a price that you'll donate to me if i buy an emu if you don't believe me that i'll buy an emu and if i do buy it then you have to pay me this money and like hella people signed it because they're like you're not going to buy an emu so and, where's the emu then, today huh where's the emu today uh i donated it to a farm because uh my parents wouldn't let me keep it but i had it for a few <laughs> months and it was like the best few months of my life but basically i showed up with it and all the people that signed this contract I had that said they would pay me if I bought an emu were like, damn, bro, I didn't think you were going to buy an emu, but here's, here, money, here's 60 me. bucks. Here's a hundred bucks. You like, got me, bro. yeah, I actually profited off of it because more people signed it than the cost of the emu. But that's, that's the long story short. That's a come up. Yeah. But I bought it in Tennessee. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Anyways, just to turn this interview back around. Yeah, good. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I want to talk about the Cabin Boy music video. Oh shit! Cool. You guys were on the beach, right in front of the ocean. The oh. whole time I'm watching it, I'm thinking the high tide's gonna fucking hit their gear. It was coming. Uh, was was that uh, a thing? Did, geese. It was coming. It was coming. Yeah, we had to move our gear every five minutes. Yeah, just about every single five minutes, we had to move everything up just a little bit. And <laughs> it was honestly horrifying just because it's already bad enough that you got to put like your expensive stuff like in the sand. Mm -hmm. And you're already just thinking to yourself, this is kind of a bad idea, but it's such a good idea at the same time. Spontaneous music video. Yeah, we, <laughs> we had a show cancel on us. So we, 
on we a tour. We Galveston. We were, Galveston, we were in Galveston, Texas. Galveston, Texas when we did that. That was in Texas. Okay. Yeah, and we had a day off because the show got canceled. We had we had like two days where a show got canceled and a new show got booked. And the new show was the next day in Galveston. So the day before we went to Galveston, and we're like, let's hang out at the beach. And I was like, hey, we could shoot a music video here. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm the reason why we had to keep moving the gear because I thought I could read a tide chart. And I'm pretty sure I thought it was going out, but it looks like it was actually coming in so at an alarming rate at an alarming rate too <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> we set up That's during low bad. tide and as soon as we we're like all right we're ready to film it would be like the water was touching our gear and we we're like we yeah. have to move yeah and then we'd reset it and then we'd be like oh it's still coming up and then we we're just like fuck it move it all the way up <laughs> those seagulls are real by the way are they no so, yeah you're yeah. fucking with me you no, no, we no. Oh, we had a bag of bagels on the bus. Yeah, there's was a bag of bagels. Which, which was, was our our food supply for the week. Yeah, so <laughs> we found the, the seagulls to keep them sitting there. No, you guys are full of shit. I, uh, Dude, we, there we, is, we were tearing off pieces of bread, and someone was behind our was, amps. And there was, we were just tossing bread behind us. Yeah, there was <laughs> a, a couple that walked by, like a dude and a chick, and they are like, what are you guys doing? And we are like, hey, can you do us a favor? Hide behind our cabs and, keep bread. and pinch off pieces of bagels and just throw them. No fucking keep the seagulls way. here. Yeah. And Dude, they were like, hyping. all right. And I was like, I'll put your name in the credits. And then they just kept throwing bread and seagulls kept coming. And then they left after we finished filming and I never got their names, so I couldn't credit them. But <laughs> like, that's what happened. And if you watch our behind the scenes video, you can see them you'll walk see up. Yeah, you'll see it. I was like hyper focused on the seagulls the whole video, and I was just like, "There's no way those." Bir- Have you guys ever seen the movie Birdemic? No, <laughs> but it sounds like something I want to watch. Birdemic. It, it's like it's so it's like one of those movies on IMDb has one out of ten star. It's like known for being like the one of the best worst movies kind of thing. Yeah. But the birds, oh hell yeah, but yeah. the like birds, zombies. Like yeah, snakes yeah, on yeah. a plane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the birds in the background are extremely sketch looking. So like when I was watching your guys' video, I'm like, how the fuck they edit those birds in there? But that's so crazy. You had someone feeding them seagulls the whole time. Bagels. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, watch the behind the scenes video. You can see Goose walking onto the beach with a bag of bagels in his hand. <laughs> and then you see a couple walk up to us in another shot. And then all of a sudden we're just like standing there and there's seagulls everywhere. Damn. Okay. And like at first there weren't any, and Nate was like, "Dude, I, I'm telling you, if you just start throwing breadcrumbs, they'll show up." And like there's no seagulls around, and I was just like, "All right." And I threw one in the water, and then all of a sudden, like, come out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, there's seagulls <laughs> everywhere. Uh, dude, they are crazy, and they're getting smarter every summer. Like, you 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 feed them a little bit, and the whole. F- pack comes through and they're getting smarter they're getting they they don't give a fuck they'll come in and grab the pizza right off your plate on the boardwalk they sound like the pigeons in in atlanta oh yeah (laughs) yeah pigeons aren't real though right yeah yeah they're all yeah they're all they're They're all government robots yeah i follow that (laughs) i'm with that all right so i also wanted to talk about your uh guys other music video uh off course of course with uh Of of course yeah of course um so where did you guys get all the balls for that oh man <laughs> so so right before we filmed that was when toys r us went bankrupt <laughs> and all of their balls were like 80 percent off wait did they have a ball pit no oh, they had like little balls that you can buy like though, at the purchase. back of the store you can buy bags of balls for like your toddler's ball pit ball pit crib or some shit and like i was like oh dude it's perfect i think it, i sent you a video of a dude wakeboarding on balls yeah and then, and then which i've seen before but i completely yeah, forgot yeah, about yeah. It, he was he was kite surfing oh yeah he was kite surfing on these balls in the water and i was like this is a good idea and then like he came up with this idea to find pit balls wherever the hell he could find them and and it just so happened that it was when 10,000 uh, balls. <laughs> you guys bought 10,000 balls for that music video. It a lot. No, no, it wasn't 10,000. It, it, it actually wasn't enough, but it was like 
all I could afford. But it was when Toys R Us was going bankrupt and they had a sale on everything because they're like, oh, we're closing all our stores in a few months. And so their balls were like 80% off. And I was like, I'll buy all of your balls. And I went to two different Toys R Us's and like bought out all of their balls, their ball pit balls. (laughs) And, And at the same time, me and Will lived at the same house and we were about to move out. Uh, so our lease was up in like less than a week and I was like, all right, I'm going to move all my furniture out of my bedroom early and then we're going to fill the room with balls. So we did that for like the band shots and then the new place that I moved to, they had a pool and I was like, Hey, can I borrow your pool for a music video? And they're like, I don't care. And so then we took all the balls and filled the pool up with balls for the rest of the shots. Oh my God. Yep. Yeah. I was wondering how you guys got the effect of like the waves with the balls. That, yeah. I'll take for that too, right? We have a, yeah. We, we have got, another yeah, behind yeah. the scenes yeah. video for that. Yeah, go see how we did that. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Also uh, kind of a pain in the ass. It's also kind of a pain in the butt, but yeah. Yeah. So where do the balls reside now? In my kick drum. I still find them. There. No, don't listen to him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think they're in a bunch of trash bags by the pool or they got thrown out. I don't know. I I keep finding balls like all around the property, like randomly. I'm like, oh, there's a surviving ball. (laughs) But like, like, like I offered after we shot the video, I was like, hey, you want me to like clean up these balls and throw them out? And they're like, no, we like them in our pool. They're cool and they're fun. And I was like, all right, less work for me, more work for you. Like, in the winter time, you're gonna have to clean these out, but they're like, nah, it's fine. <laughs> and so I never cleaned them up. So they're like, some of them are in the pool, some of them are around the property, some of them probably got thrown out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it what? sounds like the band's down for a silly goose time. Uh t- so like, but as far as the lyrical content goes for the band, do we get pretty serious? Mm. I think so. I say all our lyrics are pretty serious. Yeah. So you like, guys do want to be taken seriously as far as like the the music content goes. No, I don't give a fuck. Like, I mean, if someone wants to read into the lyrics, then they'll be like, "Oh, I like these lyrics," or they'll be like, "Oh, these lyrics are trash." I mean, it's up, it's up to the person that's consuming them, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Pick a pick a song, and I'll tell you if it's serious. I mean, they're all serious, but it's like. The only part that's not that serious would be like the videos that portray them. Like if you were to listen to a song and read the lyrics, you'd be like, oh, bro, that that hits me in the feels. But then you see the music video and you're just like, these guys are a joke. This is fun. (laughs) These guys are Or that. If you want to go off our YouTube comments. Yeah. If you want to (laughs) go. I want to get into that in a little bit. But uh, before we talk about your guys' viral video uh, stick up, let's talk about Crab Core. Okay. All right. Because there's not a lot of people carrying the torch for crab core right now. Because um, everyone's got bad knees. Yeah, they're all old now. That could they're not be not reinforced it. like us. <laughs> so when when 2020 uh, Attack Attack announced the return of the crab, guys, get ready. We're bringing back the crab. And, and then they, they didn't. They didn't. Though. And they didn't. And you guys were like, nah, bitch, I'm taking the torch and I'm running with it. And this is how you do crab core. Yeah. Well, the, my biggest yeah. problem with their song, I forget what the song's called, but you can't Important. crab to it. They didn't do anything. It wasn't a little bit. Not- it's called All My Life. Mm-hmm. And my biggest problem was that they hyped it up as a crab core song. They said the crab is back. Gods are, or they said silence mortal, the crabs are back or something like that. And then like, Every time someone would comment on their posts, they would say like, "I'll oh, stretch your hamstrings or get ready for the crab and all this. And so everyone was like, yeah, crab core is coming back. The gods, the creators of crab core. And I personally was hyped up. Disappointed. We were all hyped up. Yeah. And then they released it and it was just straight butt rock. Like, butt rock. Yeah. Well, do you know what my biggest problem is? Is that they... Uh, they announced the crab is back, silence mortals, the crab is back, or whatever. And then they, before releasing the song, they released pre-sale merch. So 
It's yeah. getting people to buy the new merch thinking oh, Crabcore is coming back. And Before then the song was released. Yeah. Oh, man. Bait yeah, and switch. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I didn't even know about that. I didn't, but, like, yeah, <laughs> I was completely disappointed. Like, I disappointed. I know he was disappointed. All right, well... If you want to know a secret, we actually had this song recorded before they announced that. Ooh. So they announced that in October, and we recorded this song in August. And we were kind of like sitting on it, waiting for the right time, and then they did that shit. Oh. And I was like, holy shit. Like, whether they come out with a Crabcore song or they don't, this will be perfect. Because if they don't deliver, people will still be hungry for Crabcore. Mm-hmm. If they do deliver, everybody will be like, oh, Crabcore's back. And then they didn't deliver, and everyone was hungry for Crabcore, and then we were just like, all right, hold my beer. Well, we got the fix. Here you go. Uh, well, you guys being you, – you, would you guys say that you're inspired by Attack Attack's old music? Because uh, I know you guys – I'd be uh, lying if I said we weren't, yeah. but – I think it'd be more accurate to say we're inspired by the time period mm -hmm. that they were relevant in because there's a lot of bands that had a good crab core sound. And before we released stick up, we still had crab core in our songs. It just wasn't a hundred percent. It would just be like, Hey, here's a song. And a lot of it is crab core. Mm -hmm. But none of it really took off until we were like, all right, we need to go all in, balls deep, 100% crab core, because no one else is. So someone's got to do it. So why not us? Like, we can. <laughs> and that's what we know how to write. So let's just fucking do it. Yeah, and I think it's cool because you guys even, like, on your merch, you'll, like, say, like... It'll be like Hall of the Elders, Crab Core. Like I saw a tank top that said that. You guys got your own beer. Was that a beer I saw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got, I mean, it's you not, got it's not an official beer. beer. You can't buy it anywhere oh. unless you unless you know us personally. I want one. I don't even drink beer. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do. But I speaking of merch, you guys also have your own sneakers and bikinis. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, sneakers and bikinis. But yeah. The pillows too. Don't forget the pillow or the throw, yeah, we got, the we got, throw blanket. We got a throw blanket too. We got blankets and beach towels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's sick. Um it's a small market, but it's out there. Yeah. Um Very small. I'm sorry, got a little off track, but also uh with the whole crab core thing, uh, are there any other crab core bands in the scene right now that you would like to link up once shows are back up and running? Let me think. Good question. Say like before, but, um. like <laughs> so crab core isn't exactly a genre. It's like multiple genres that fit a dance style, I guess. <laughs> So some bands might be like, no, we're not crab core, but there are bands that we would want to link up with that we would think that, yeah, are do fit crab core. <laughs> do you think people are embarrassed by the crab? Um, like some people can... think we're cringy, but yeah, some that's people, about it. Some people are just like, oh, this is so bad. This this needs to die. But like that's what keeps us alive. The haters, like when you get haters, you know you're doing something right. You know, right. But as far as bands go, yeah. Uh, Sailing Before the Wind is one of our favorites, and they probably wouldn't want to be called Crabcore, but they're like a heavy metalcore band from Japan. Um, what There's um, Captain Graveyard that claims to be trying to bring Crabcore back, and they're from... The Netherlands or something. Yeah, somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Um, is there a lot of like people are like saying we are a lot of like Captain Graveyard and us? On, like, what was the other band? Or Cabin Neon Boy Jump Ship or something like that. Yeah, Cabin Boy Jump Ship. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of borderline bands that are like teasing that they're crabcore, but it's like I'm not sure if they're all in for the religion. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think time will tell. I think it's like 
people are realizing that they miss that era and in a few months or years like it'll be obvious who's ready to make the comeback we just need a couple more bands like you guys that fully embrace the crowd. Yeah, that's the key. Fully embracing it, not dabbling in it. We dabbled in it for a while, and I was like, no, I love this shit. <laughs> we love this shit. Like, Need more guitar throws. Yeah, fuck the haters. Let's do it. I miss it. Well, and... let's, let's talk about the, the, the crab movements. Uh, how do you guys choreograph these moves? <laughs> like, before we actually go on stage and on camera uh i would say on stage because i haven't seen any videos of you guys full on crabbing uh but i have seen the stick up music video where the moves are just done perfectly oh thanks that's practice i think with them i just yeah i just said yeah, you around. talk about it geese uh just the way our practices normally run is um normally you know we're just standing there making sure we actually have like the instrumental parts completely down Otherwise, Mark will make us restart over and over and over again until we have it perfect. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, yeah, so stickler. so during the slow notes, it's like, make sure you get all the way down, go all the way back up. It's like, and I think, and some some of it's kind of improv because like sometimes like we'll be talking, it's like maybe it's like I think we need a spin here. It's like nah nah nah, guitar throw. That's what we need. And it's really just trial and error until we're like, oh, that felt so good. Let's keep it. Oh, you guys yeah. need to do a video on your YouTube channel where you guys like it's just like someone like watching you guys as you guys discuss where you're gonna do the next crab move in the song. Oh yeah. No, it's coming in, in yeah. one of the future scene bros episodes. Oh, we'll wait. go behind the scenes of our practices, but to give you a little I guess uh description is like like he said, we'll make sure we have the music down first before we start working on the stage presence. Um, but that is part of our practices. We'll be like, hey, what fits here? What looks good? What will piss people off? <laughs> and then a uh, big part of it is we film ourselves and we'll try different things and then we'll go and watch it. Yeah. And we'll say, hey, this looks good. This looks stupid. Keep it, you know. And then as far as the most recent music video goes, like, uh, <laughs> I think it was on Thanksgiving. We all got together and hung out and, like, kind of wrote, if you can call it that, wrote the choreography oh. <laughs> for, for Stick Up. And, and we were pretty drunk. And then I was like, all right, <laughs> film, film me playing the choreography for the song. And I'll send it to the whole band and everybody has to practice to the video that I'm sending you. So like I did the choreography in a video, Goose filmed it, and then I sent it to our band group chat. And then everybody was like, all right, I'm going to practice this at home. And then we all got together for like the music video and everybody had practiced it. So and then we all also made the NSFW video that got taken down by Instagram that night. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wait, yeah. What happened? So while we were there, you know, <laughs> you know, Instagram has reels now, so you can make a 15 second video and you just have to like, you know, start and go, but you have 15 seconds and you can chop it up however you want. And we have this thing going on where we talk about, we always get the most views whenever we get the most exposure when we're exposed. So, um, it was like every two to three seconds, we would play a part of stick up. But every single time the video cut, we would lose an article of clothing. <laughs> and and it got to the point where... Hey, red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, where we were just straight tube socking it. And we were, <laughs> we were doing guitar throws. And then the very last scene is just a picture of me and Mark. Nate. Like, all the way crabbed out, spread. And just everything was out. And we put it on Instagram. And it started blowing up. And then as it blow, blew up... It eventually got taken down for nudity. Yeah, for disrupting the guidelines. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so you guys yeah. got naked on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> that's that's not that's not a big thing though. I feel like you know we're like that's drunk a... as fuck, and I like woke up and I was like, "What is this? Why does our video have so many views?" And I was like, "Oh <laughs> my god, we got naked last night." And then before I could like send it to everybody, it was like your post has been removed. I was like, oh, that makes sense. I seen it. So as far as crab core lore goes, 
back in the day, we got a uh, attack going viral off of Stick Stickly. And yeah. then and then here in 2021, we got Hall of the Elders going viral off of uh Stick Up. We got the Stick songs. And yeah. uh do you see uh, a, a correlation between like crab core just instantly going viral when you have the metal core mixed with the moves? Um, what do you mean? Because of the crab core itself? Yeah, the dancing. It's, it's crazy to see just like that. Like <clears throat> back, when did that come out? 2007? 2007 2008 they had the demo video in 2007 but didn't blow up till 2008 with the official video yeah so and that shit at the time it was like 50 50 likes versus dislikes on youtube so many people hated it which is why i think it got so popular mm -hmm. and then i think if we were to do this type of video like five or ten years ago it would not have been as popular because I think it needed some time to just be on, yeah, like be on the back burner and people forgot about it and thought it was dead because you have like half of the fan base is like, oh, we love crab core and this genre of music. And then half of the fan base is like, this genre is awful and it needs to die and never come back. And then it had enough time for people to forget about it and breathe. And then we were just like, you know what? We miss it. And then we brought it back. And a bunch of people were nostalgic and a bunch of people were hateful and cringing. And I think both of those feed into it. And you guys don't let the haters affect you. Honestly, the negative comments, I thrive on that way more than I do with the positive ones. Yeah, we love that shit. Because <laughs> like everyone's like, man, who do these guys think that they are? Like, they they just want to be attack attack. They just want to be this, and we're just making music uh, and being ourselves. And there was a I recent was comment that was like, "Oh, stop bringing shame to metalcore or something." And I'm thinking like, metalcore is almost dead, and this is breathing new life into it, whether you like it or not. They can't but, get with the times, man. I don't know. It's like, like the whole cringe side of it is like part of it, in my opinion. Cringe core. Because it's a <laughs> self-aware joke, if that makes sense. Okay, so for the people asking in the comment section, like, I don't get, is this a parody or are these guys being for real? What do you guys have to say about that? We don't know either. <laughs> it's subjective. If you think we're a joke, then we're then we can be as much of a joke as you want us to be. But, you know, if you're listening to the music, you're listening to the music, right? Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> like, from my perspective of the song Stick Up, it's the best song you guys put out to date, and I think the song is super fucking strong. And even, like, as I was going through the comments, I'm just like, <laughs> mad, mad people are just saying, like, yo, this song fucking slaps. Like, fuck, yeah. fuck the people that are hating on this shit. I was honestly surprised by that, bro. I was too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you, did you I, think I was a hater? No, 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 no. No, no we're no, just surprised I, like, at how many people liked it. Like, we're leading up to the release, we're like, all right, the marketing strategy is we want people to hate on this. But then a bunch of people liked it. And I was like, all right, well, people like the music, whether they hate on the visual side or not, is irrelevant because a bunch of people seem to like the audio side. Yeah, I think, I, I think I was fully prepared for more negative than positive, and then when I saw that it was actually the other way around, I was like, "Good God, what, what has been created here?" You know what I mean? Like, because I, I fully expected to get roasted. I mean, a hundred percent. I think a lot of people expected to get roasted, and when that didn't happen, like we thought it was going to happen, I was like, "Hell yeah!" Also, Mark, didn't you say that this was like one of like those times where like you didn't put a lot of effort into writing like the intro riff and then you were like huh yeah, people pe people like this minimal effort stuff that i didn't put that much time into hell yeah uh, <laughs> profit profit I, I mean, that's only like one of the riffs though on the i played the music video for my roommates and as soon as uh Mark, when you said, so take your shot, and then oh, yeah. your your guitarist starts doing the finger tap thing, everyone was just like, oh, shit, this is Hell so, yeah. so hard. <laughs> no, I'm being dead ass, though. Point. Yeah. I, I, I think if you watch it, if you don't watch the music video and you just listen to it, 
and then you watch the music video, I I could see how people will go, what what is going on here? Because if you just listen to the song, you don't have any visuals. It sounds super serious. Mm -hmm. But then when you watch the music video part, you're like, what? Fake gun. What is going on? They got a Nintendo NES gun going on. What is going on in this video? You know, so I I definitely see where people are coming from. But it wouldn't, I don't think the song would have done well without the video. Yeah, for sure. Without a doubt. Right. And one thing specifically about the video, um, because I had to ask my roommates, I had to ask my girlfriend, who is a hairstylist, is your guys' hair real? Bro, this is our real hair, bro. Yeah, man. This doesn't come off. Look at this shit. Yeah, man. Ow, you're hurting me. That's real, You're man. hurting me. It's our. This is our true selves. I don't want to be rude. I. And I'm. I'm. Get- how about? How about you just come over here and take it off me? <laughs> I mean, I definitely want to come party with you guys at one you point. Should. You would. You would enjoy. I think you'd enjoy. But coming from the moon, that's gotta be pretty far. It's a long distance, man. Yeah, I gotta be committed. I want everyone who's listening to this right now comment in the comment section if the hair is real. All right, of course it is. <laughs> hey, uh, I actually have to get out of here. I have to go back to back right, to get, college. So get the fuck out. Yeah, he's, he's, going oh. back, he's going back to college. Goose is going to school for music. He's, we're he's we're hoping boy. he can learn how to count in four four yeah, so suck anymore. yeah i'm tired of mark going back over like the bass lines that i lay down just because, he just like lets me track just so like to make me feel good i know yeah that my bass. goose just started music school and he got off class for two hours just to come to this interview and he has to go back now to go learn more what class are you going to uh performance so he's going to learn got, how to got perform. He's got an A in that one for sure. Yeah. That's an A already. He's going to teach everyone in his class how to crab core. You should. That is amazing. <laughs> Just... Anyway, it was good being on this interview. Yo, <laughs> thank you so much, Goose. I appreciate it, bud. What about proudest moment being in the band? Like, as Because you guys got a lot going on. You guys have this new viral single that's come out. You guys played Warp Tour. You have, uh, you create your own YouTube content. Out of everything that's going on, Like, what's the proudest thing you've guys done? Mm. 2018 Warp Tour. Yeah. I, was, I would say the same thing. Surviving 2018 Warp Tour. Yeah. Not just being a part of it, but being able to make it to every single date of the 2018 warp tour because like not a lot of people don't understand a big part of warp tour isn't just getting on the tour but it's also surviving the entire summer and making it to every single date like all the official bands they they get access to like the tour ready rvs and stuff but any of the other bands they have to provide their own vehicles and we survived the entire summer as an up and coming band. Yeah. On, like on our own. On our own. And we would have breakdowns throughout the entire summer, but we were, we would either fix them ourselves or get a mechanic to help us with them. And we would do it in a timely fashion and never miss a single date, which was very challenging, but always the top priority. It was, we cannot miss a single date. We have to make every single date, no excuses. Um, And I think that was our biggest accomplishment. Just like by the time we got to the end of it, it was like, hey, think of everything we've been through, like our bus going out at day one, renting a van, having to take days off to get tires, and still getting... No sleep schedule, like me and you drove the whole entire time. yeah like all the big bands have their own bus drivers so they sleep at night while their bus drivers drive and then they perform during the day but us we would sell cds all day then we would perform then we'd keep selling cds because we weren't paid by the tour we were surviving off of cd sales for gas money and did you guys have a merch person um we had one or two merch persons and all they would do is the same thing that we would do is go around all day and dry sell CDs to random people that have never heard of us before. And then at the end of the day, we would just be like, all right, how many CDs did you sell to random people? And did you promote enough to make people come watch our set? And then that would be our gas money for the night. And if we were above, 
uh, our expected income and be like, all right, sweet. We have extra gas money. And then if we were below, it'd be like, all right, we need to work harder tomorrow to get more gas money. And on top of that, we're all in debt because of our transmission at the beginning of the summer. So when he say it dry, so we would hustle like the whole line, you know, we would, anybody that would talk to us or like be interested in, in what we had to offer, we'd let them listen to it. You know, we, we'd interact, we'd, we'd make, we'd make fans and then we'd sell our CDs. Like on, on our page, you'll see people say, I bought a, I bought a CD from you outside 2018, you know, X, Y, Z location. And that's how I heard of you guys rock. Like that's, that, that's how we, made our money and that's how we yeah in the long run it paid off but the the biggest like the most fulfilling accomplishment was getting to the last day of the 2018 warp tour and being like hey we finished warp tour we didn't miss a single day we're tired and (laughs) yeah we're tired but we made it and we were given the opportunity to perform at the final warp tour and if we had waited one more year, we wouldn't have had that opportunity. Yeah. So to me, that's the biggest accomplishment. But I don't think we should quit from there. Like you can always keep going on, even if Warp Tour doesn't exist anymore. Sure, that's not a reason to quit. Yeah. So if you have any advice to give to other bands when shows are back up and running, obviously, uh, if you had any advice to give to them about going on a full length tour, what would be the best piece of advice you'd give them? Um, well, whether shows or not are back or not, I would say the best piece of, of advice is to be yourself. And as generic as that sounds like it's so true because like, even when we're just making YouTube videos and there's no shows going on, we just have fun and act stupid, but we make video content that entertains us as a band um and like our general audience is literally our band members like if we love it and enjoy it then we're like yeah upload it to youtube and if we don't like it we're just like no it's not good content so our first fan base is literally our own band members and if we like it then maybe someone else will like it and if they don't who cares but people seem to like that we're true to ourselves and the same goes with like playing shows and touring like if you act like you're bigger and more famous than you really are people can see that and you're like oh you're just trying to pretend like you're cool and you're actually not but if you're just trying to have fun like then your audience can have fun too and i think that's something that i guess metal or metalcore has kind of lost is like people trying to have fun it's became become more of a thing where people are trying to be serious and cool and like oh i'm gonna write a song about being depressed and how cool i am because i'm depressed and like everyone's doing that and it's not like i don't know it doesn't it doesn't resonate as much with me personally but i think if you're having fun people your fans can have fun too, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I don't know if you guys watch the punk rock NBA. Yeah. 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 Uh, Finn's the homie. He, uh, he just recently made a video talking about like why, like why rock isn't in the mainstream. It's because people like to have fucking fun. (laughs) Yep. I, I just saw that video like two weeks ago and I was like, holy shit. Like I would have said that, but he just said it for me. (laughs) Yeah, it's facts. Like he was talking about how rock at its peak was all about people having fun. And then eventually it became more and more serious and hardcore and trying to be the cool guy in the room. And that's when it's lost. That's when it's lost. It's a momentum, you know? I also saw, I also saw another video he did where talking about like the, the crab in a barrel, a monkey in a barrel mentality or whatever, where like everyone's like stepping on each other. And not trying to lift each other up, mm. but like, but like with the with the hip hop scene and everything like that, like they all lift each other up. You know what I mean? Like they, like, oh look, look what he's doing, look what he's doing. And a lot of the rock is they're not like that. They're well, who's on top? You know, like trying to struggle to get out of the barrel. And I I thought that was a big thing too because I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like everyone's stepping on each other. They're not helping each other at this point. You know, it's like well, every man for himself type. 
Do you, you know? do you feel like uh, your scene shows support for you guys? Uh, <laughs> not at first. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to see what the to gauge the scene right now. Anyway, with no shows going on, you know, with everything going on right now, I mean, I think people who know who we are, like they, they're definitely except like they they yes this is them but like for new people outside i mean i'm sure at first they're like i gotta figure these guys out first before i get any closer and then but i think the people that know us yeah i th- I, I say i say so cool. i think the thing that helps the most is our shows not just our music videos because the shows are kind of showing like us behind the scenes even though a lot of them are scripted but it's like it helps build a community and with the music videos it's just like oh here's their music and how they act when they're playing music but then we can build a community with the video content we make and the skits and i don't know in my opinion metal it needs more fun pumped into it because it's drawing more to the side of oh let's be serious and hardcore and all this and it's harder to become friendly in that type of environment and we're just trying to have fun so that's obvious from the stick up music video did you have (laughs) any idea like that shit was gonna blow up overnight no no clue no definitely not no clue so how'd you guys handle it like as you just start seeing the numbers going up the shares just going completely viral like what was your initial reaction to all that I quit my job. No, no. <laughs> no oh, I've, I, I thought it was surreal. I really did. And the next day I was like, well, I, I need a second to figure out what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. To, to me, it was surreal. I, I can't speak for him, but t- my personal opinion, I was like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like I expected it to do well, but not as well as it's doing. It has uh, any like labels like, come like sliding in any dms or anything no not recently only you okay um so what's next do we have like any new music or uh uh new videos on the way um yeah we got a few demos that we're just wrapping up because it wasn't like we finished an entire album of demos. And then we were like, all right, let's release a single. It was kind of like we had a bunch of half demos done. And then all of a sudden we had this one demo done instantly. And we're like, well, gone with this one. Let's release it. Why not? It's It's done. And we can make a music video. So what's stopping us? So we did. And it performed better than we anticipated. And now we're like, well, guess we better finish the rest of our demos. So we'll probably do like one more single and then maybe release an EP or an album. But in my opinion, albums are kind of dead in the day of streaming. Everything's about streaming now and the single singles. Yeah. So we might just release one single as they're done. Cool. But we got a few more that we just got to wrap up. And uh, in my opinion, Every single needs a music video, but I'm all about videos. Like I went to school for video. I love making videos. Uh, My primary focus for social media is YouTube. And that's what I want to build more than anything. So I'm going to make a video for every chance I get. So why not make a music video for all of our songs? There's definitely a lot more videos coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And on top of music videos, we have two shows working right now. We got bio news uh we've got a new show called super scene bros that goes behind the scenes with everything we're doing and then we have like two other shows that we're working on putting out that i won't tell you what they're called yet okay in case they don't come to light but they will come to light you just got to keep an eye out yes so for anyone who's listening smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell that's right Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I really appreciate you guys, uh, coming on the show, uh, telling yeah. us the history of the band, giving us some behind the scenes. Um, any final words for the fans listening right now? Um, yeah, like 
stay true to you to yourself you know like if you like a certain type of music don't let someone tell you that it's gay or cringy or whatnot like i've loved crap core and metal core and post hardcore and electronic core my whole life even though it died off i still listen to that more than the new stuff coming out so if you like it you know embrace it or anything like that like that's all I got, really. What about you, Nate? Uh, let's rage. Let's go. Let's let's <laughs> let's let's get active. More let's have some crab. action going. More yeah, crab let's... in twenty twenty one. Let's do it. Yeah, we, it's about to happen. So yeah, there's no time period for a music genre. It can be popular whenever you want to listen to it. Hell yeah! Uh, Hell yeah, bro! So thank you, everyone uh, that stuck out this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Go follow uh, Hall of the Elders on all streaming services on their YouTube channel because they got new videos coming. And thank you so much for watching. So take your shot.